Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. Well, I shared last week with you about a fellow named Noah. Today, I want to look at a, another guy in the Old Testament. His name is Abram, which gets changed to Abraham. And we find his story beginning in Genesis chapter 12. So let's read the first few verses here and see what we see. The Lord said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt, and all the families on the earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, and all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people he'd taken into his household at Haran, and headed for the land of Canaan. When he arrived in Canaan, Abraham traveled through the land as far as Shechem. There he set up camp beside the oak of Morhead. At the time, the area was inhabited by Canaanites. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give you this land to your descendants. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated to the Lord who had appeared to him. This is a fascinating story about a man that we don't hear a thing about until this comes up. Don't know who he was. Obviously, he had some, he had some wealth because uh, he had lots of people and, and others that were part of his his tribe, if you will, his group. But one day, God appears to him and he says, "Abram, I want you to give up everything that you've had and move." Now, I'm not suggesting that to please God, you have to do this. I am suggesting that to please God, you have to do whatever God asks you to do, however difficult. This might be the most difficult part to do. Now, later on, we know that Abraham has another problem to deal with, but we're not there yet. So he says, I want you to pack up and move because I'm going to make you something special. Now, there's no indication ahead of this that Abram wanted to be special. There's no indication anywhere that he had struggled in his life for a sense of meaning. It said he had to leave his father's family. I mean, family was everything in the Old Testament. And for some people today, particularly those of you listening to me, Family is still everything to you. But yet God says to Abram, I want more. And probably Abram's thinking, God, you're asking more than I can give. Sometimes it feels that way. Sometimes God asks us to do something that we are positive we can't do. However, this story should encourage us because Abram goes. Now, I have no idea what he struggled with in making this decision because the Bible doesn't tell us. I have no idea what his relatives thought or even his wife Sarai and his family thought. I mean, it's one thing to pick up yourself and then maybe a spouse, but to pick up a whole bunch of folks with you, that's a tougher thing. But yet, God said, I want you to do this. And he goes without having any knowledge as to what the ramifications of that's going to be. Several times in my life, God has asked me to go. 
in a literal or spiritual way. And I remember one in particular when we had moved back from the West. We were back in Kentucky, which was kind of home. And we only stayed about a year and circumstances beyond my control dictated that we move again. And my son David was very upset that we left Wyoming. And I convinced him to go almost because I said, this is where we're going to go and we're going to finish up. And then I had to tell him, no, we're going to move again. And my son was not happy. Well, we moved to Virginia. And what happened in the move is we found a school, we found a coach who changed his running and began the pathway to where he became an Olympic gold medalist. Had I not moved, the chances of David reaching that in his life probably weren't going to happen. You see, when God asks us to do something, we don't have to know the outcome. We only have to know that he asks us and so we do it. And the outcome is in fact what God intends when he asks you. So Abram gets moving in the direction of Canaan. There's no indication God told him that's where I'm going to plunk you down until he got there. And when he got there, God said, okay, Abram, this is the place. And he built an altar, which was something you did in the Old Testament to set a covenant agreement, one that's unbreakable, one that you're saying, I will do this. Well, in today's world, we don't build altars, I don't think. We don't make many covenants. But what we do do is live our lives wondering if that's what God wants us to do. And for most of us, packing up and moving is not in God's plans. But for a few of us, it is. And whether it's a literal movement or just a philosophical change, whichever it is, when God asks us to go, we have to be willing to go. And so I'll ask you the question today. Has God ever asked you to go? And were you willing to do that? If you really want to reach, quote, the promised land, <laughs> then you have to go. You have to change. You have to do different when God asks you. Well, you think about it. Take a look at your life and you think about it. I'll be back tomorrow with, with some more words on this guy, April. There's a whole a huge story here and we'll tackle some of it next time. God bless you. If you have a need or a concern, let us know. We'll do whatever we can as fast as we can to help meet your need. Take care. I'll talk to you again.